Hello again. There is, as I'm sure we've all noticed, a huge difference between the views of the average working class person on immigration and what the middle class types, academics, politicians and indeed most educated people apparently feel about the subject. This is a trend which goes back well over 50 years. How those people sneered at supporters of Enoch Powell in 1968. How they despised those who voted to leave Europe in 2016. Just look at the contempt they feel now for Nigel Farage. Anybody expressing any reservations about immigration is routinely dismissed as being far-right or racist. Even calling for a halt to illegal immigration is met by posters saying refugees welcome here or, and I actually saw this in a middle class home recently, thank God for immigrants. The irony that this was in a smart house whose owner is a fanatical atheist did not escape me. Why on earth are these people so keen on immigration? and also eager to denounce working-class people who are opposed to it as wicked fools. This is at first sight puzzling, but becomes a lot easier to understand if you strip away the fancy words and simply ask the old Latin question, We bono. Who benefits from this thing? Well, it's easy to see who does not benefit. Anybody living in rented accommodation, for instance, whether privately or in social housing, will not be benefiting. With hundreds of thousands of new immigrants each year, all needing rented flats and houses, the iron law of supply and demand kicks in and means inevitably that, as with well, whether you're talking about rented flats or diamonds, as those things become scarce, then the price rises inexorably. That's why it is so hard to find affordable accommodation and why the waiting list for council houses is so long. The same of course applies to people who are forced to rely upon the nearest state school. Middle, the middle classes tend to have very sharp elbows where schools are concerned as I'm sure some viewers will have noticed. Middle class people are able to move house to be in a good school's catchment area or pay privately for uh, an independent school or perhaps for tutors to give their kids an edge in the examinations for grammar schools. All these are luxuries not available to most working people. They have to make do with what they're offered. Their kids end up in what were once known as sink schools where many pupils don't even speak English and good teachers avoid getting jobs in those places like the plague. Because of the glut of foreign labour, wages are also driven down and jobs harder to come by. When last did anybody watching this receive an Amazon delivery from a white British worker, or order an Uber driven by somebody who was white and working class? These are, as you might say, negative points. Immigration does not benefit the working classes, as we all of us know. This is why when Enoch Powell gave his famous speech in 1968, working people were first out of the traps, showing their support. They, at least, could see where things were heading. It's a different story for bosses and well-off people, of course, which, by the way, includes the whole of the political class, both Conservative and Labour. It is unlikely at this late stage in my life that I'm going to become a capitalist, but if I were, I would love immigration. The more people after jobs, then the lower the wages I can pay for them. It's supply and demand again, you see. If I want a plumber, a nanny, an au pair, a builder, then there are many foreigners who will work more cheaply than British people. What cool is that? On a larger scale, the building industry, for example, is now heavily reliant upon cheap immigrant labour, much of it illegal. In the description to this video, I give a link to a piece from a newsletter of the construction industry, 
which draws attention to the problem of modern slavery on building sites. This is big business and it makes building in London much cheaper for bosses when they can hire illegal immigrants than when they have to uh, pay ordinary British working people. This is the same in many lines of work. Just look around you and ask why you seldom seem to see white British born people in many areas of the economy. Then there's the political advantage for Labour of having more foreigners coming here who will tend naturally to vote Labour once they have passports. I don't blame them, they know which side their bread is buttered on. It is often easy enough to bamboozle intellectuals with clever words and to pull the wool over their eyes with appeals to ideology. Not so with the working class so much. They can usually see through the long words and fancy ideas and understand the real nature of what is happening to them. It usually, of course, entails their being given the short straw and the case of immigration falls neatly into this category. <laughs>